1999, this woman's home was destroyed by a U.S. bomb. She found her two small boys lying unconscious in the street, just outside her home. I saw my small uh, boy. I cry with bo my high boys, Mustafa Haida, Mustafa Haida. Uh, then Mustafa wake up and saw his face is full of blood, even his eyes full of blood. And he cried, Mama, Mama. I catch him, I can't catch him because all of his body is full of blood. I frightened if I uh, hurt him. Then I saw another hell. Is my another boy, my Haydar. And a circle of blood. Circle his head. I catch him, talk to him. He never answered me. He likes sleep. I get him, touch him. He never moves. Then I know he's dead. Today, her youngest son, who survived the bombing, is permanently scarred. Bomb fragments that were clearly identified as U.S., but the Iraqi government protests were ignored. They bombed because they thought um, your homes had explosives. They said that the Iraqi government hid the things, the explosions at civilian homes, and they exploded by itself. Oh. Yes. For all the people that are in trouble, mm -hmm. we are thinking what will happen because you know. We know what the meaning you think of the war. Like almost a psychological warfare. That's, that is coming not now from the beginning of the sanction. Mm -hmm. uh, more of our youth, Allah, and more of the children. They have skate marks, and they are living in uh, many, many uh, problem, uh, physical problem like uh, schizophrenia and other things. Mm -hmm. And if we now we go to Basra. You will see some person, they are walking and they are talking, walking and talking with themselves. At the University of Baghdad, the Canadian peace team met with Iraqi PhD students. How do you feel when you hear um, George Bush Sr. now his son say, we have no argument with the Iraqi people? He says we can't liberate the Iraqi people. <coughs> yeah, and how is he going to do what he plans to do? By bombing, by autifying, by killing. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's not a fair fight. It's not like he's going to come in and, and say, those are the Iraqi people, okay, uh, you stay in peace. And the, He's just going to bomb and destroy. When he destroys the water, he's destroy, destroying us. When he hits the electricity, he's hitting us. The bridges, the, it's us, the people. Everybody don't want war because it stops our life. They, the, the minute the war begins, the electricity is go on. Uh, the go out. Yani we want, we don't want this. Yani life. The water is stopped, and uh, uh, the the life is be very difficult for the children in a school. Uh, we uh, we have these generator generators, and. Uh, Iraqi people don't want these generators, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so they are all suffer. They want <coughs> this candle to, to, to learn, and it is very difficult uh, with, the, with, with the people in the other worlds. They live in, in a very good conditions, but why America is insisted to, to punish Iraq? Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. They have no good reason to punish them. Mm -hmm. yes. And we don't want war at all. I think a, a major, major problem is that many people in the United States want somebody in the Oval Office, in the White House, who will take decisions as necessary to maintain the U.S. way of life. And the U.S. way of life right now 
is one that consumes extraordinary, enormous amounts of energy, oil and uh, gas <laughs> among them. But there is not an energy policy in the country. There's a very consumptive and a wasteful policy that goes on in the United States and people don't particularly want to change. So I think whether it's Republican or Democrat, many people say, well, just let somebody be there who's willing to use threat and force or whatever they need to do so that our children won't be disturbed. And then you find, I think, others who are actually in powerful places who say, well, here's the moment. This is the time when we could uh, perhaps have an, a, a way of controlling the flow of oil and much of the wealth in a region that's geopolitically important in terms of the interests and goals of the United States and allies to the United States. And that they, they are ready to say, I mean, some of them, not all, within the administration, we will go it alone. We, we will take this moment of not, not to form uh, the political machinery in the United Nations to resolve disputes, but to use threat and force and coercion as the way to do it. Because who would challenge the United States right now? The United States is in a very pivotal and powerful position. So this is part of the problem that we, we, we our task is to try to build within the United States constituents who will say, no, we don't want to go that way in the world. It's a foolish way to go. Um, but that's the way that empire develops this kind of might makes right. <laughs>